and welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. I am very happy to be with you. It's going to be kind of a short one today. Not a whole lot of uh, major things to go through, but I want to hit the high points. It was another rally day in the market. For those of you, by the way, <clears throat> watching on the video, I am recording in my office in New York City instead of the studio, uh, just simply because we're dealing with a few technical things. And so I am uh, sitting at my desk. I have all of the market action right in front of me. And these rally days are just quite interesting because at this point, you do start to kind of wonder who, who some of the buyers are at this level. But the market opened pretty flattish, was up a little bit, and then it just kind of worked its way higher throughout the morning and then kind of stayed flat for most of the um, second half of the trading day. And then it closed at a high on the day. Uh, the Dow up 252 points, which was 0.68%. And that also represented a new all-time high for the Dow. So the Dow closing at 37,558 points, um, which is uh, just rather remarkable. Uh, by the way, the S&P and NASDAQ are not to an all-time high, um, but are, are not that far away themselves so getting getting closer every every day the s p was up 59 basis points the nasdaq up 66 basis points we've had a couple of those days lately they don't happen a lot we had one last week where all three of the market indices were up in almost you know perfect tandem with one another they are so compositionally different from one another that it's very rare and it's rare for good reason the methodology how they're computed and what it is that is being computed are all very different so when they really land on what is almost the same place on a day, it just speaks to the kind of broad market beta that was uh, that were that was moving things. The bond market was up again today. The uh, ten year was down two and a half basis points. The ten year yield closing at three point nine three percent, pushing bond prices a little bit higher. The top performing sector of the stock market today was energy. It's been a little while since we've seen that. Maybe even a few weeks. Um, but energy was up one and a quarter percent today. And the worst performing sector was also positive. That was consumer staples up nearly a quarter of a percentage point. Oil was up uh, nearly 2% back above $74 a barrel. So it keeps kind of bouncing around within that low to mid 70s and staying reasonably range bound as far as WTI crude oil goes. One of the interesting data points, I don't think it was moving the market or anything today, but I think it's interesting, is the November housing starts. I just did a Dividend Cafe Friday, how much I care about the significance of there being new housing supply that uh, comes to market. And you did have a rare feat today, particularly yesterday in the back of the uh, very negative reality of NHB home builder sentiment. Uh, being, you know, that is very poor sentiment these days for the last several months. November housing starts came in quite a bit above expectations on an annualized basis, a couple hundred thousand. Um, building permits, on the other hand, came in exactly as projected. So there wasn't really a confirmation in the data. And I do believe that this is one of many examples where you need three months of rolling data to really be able to detect a trend uh, to kind of be willing to say there's a new narrative changing. Um, you know, the, I like the print, but I don't think we can call it validated at this point. Um, the Ask David today, somebody uh, had thoughtfully asked what I mean when I refer to cash flow conversion, free cash flow conversion, a metric we talk about uh, when it comes to the health of some of our portfolio companies. And it really is a reference to a company's ability to essentially generate cash flow out of its uh, earnings, out of its profits. And because we look at EBITDA as excluding the impact of uh, amortization, interest expense, um, and, and also you can even look at just the free cash flow you get out of your operating cash flow because operating cash flow is a pure bottom line of, of what's happening in the business enterprise where free cash flow is including the impact of capital expenditures. And so there is an accounting difference between how we think about 
money we spend to pay employees and money we spend to build new factories. And when you capitalize something, it isn't coming straight out of profits, but it does come from cash flow. So if you're going to be capitalizing something like a new factory, or if you're going to be capitalizing something like the interest and debt expense for, for what you borrow money to do, you want to see a cash flow conversion over time. Are you growing cash flows out of these things that um, you're essentially investing into? Does the uh, differential between your profits and cash flow turn into higher cash flow over time? That's a conversion. And that is what we mean by the ratio. There are some ways in which a company could have much lower profits than, or excuse me, much higher EBITDA than they do cash flow. Um, and yet they convert that over time and it results in a, a, a much higher cash flow into the future. That could be a very healthy thing. A lot of mature companies are already in that position where their ongoing investment into things they're doing with debt things they're doing with capital expenditures are converting into free cash flow generation, especially as dividend growth investors. We want to see that free cash flow generation, and that's what the cash flow conversion ratio is. Hope that makes sense. It's a little, uh, let's be honest, extremely fun stuff for those of us who love financial vocabulary. For all the rest of you, enjoy your evenings, enjoy your Christmas candy, your snacks, your caroling, whatever you're doing tonight. And um, reach out with any questions anytime. Have a wonderful day. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.